Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming in today. I understand this is the last breakout session, so thanks for sticking until the end, and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, on today's session, it's about uh, how you can break down data silos uh, for machine learning and analytics use cases with Amazon AppFlow. So my name is Kamen Sharonjeev. I'm a senior specialist solutions architect. Uh, been with the company for more than two and a half years. But I come with uh, extensive experience in software development, application integrations, uh, with 17 plus years uh, before joining AWS. And in the past, I um, had a lot of um, use cases where I had to integrate with third-party SaaS applications uh, in order to bring data in uh, for analytics, training machine learning models, and so on. And I hope some of you here are also been in this boat before. Uh, so you know that implementing APIs is not the most exciting thing in the world. Right? So I'm super excited to be here today and talk to you about Amazon AppFlow, uh, how you can connect and integrate with SaaS applications. But the best thing of all is we're going to do this with zero lines of code. So in terms of the, of the agenda today, uh, we've prepared a few things. So uh, we will welcome uh, Gurev, uh, who is a senior product manager for AppFlow, to give you a quick introduction about our Amazon AppFlow. Uh, I want to kind of level set everyone uh, with their understanding about what Amazon AppFlow is. We will follow this with a quick demo. Uh, so I will show you how you can uh, quickly integrate uh, with an external SaaS application. We will use Salesforce in this case and we will bring some data into AWS, okay? Uh, we will talk a little bit about why is it important to uh, talk about data silos uh, and how do we extract value out of our data. And then I will pass uh, to Ray, who is the principal product manager of Apple, who will share with you some of the amazing work we've been doing uh, the last year and some of the exciting uh, things that we are announcing today. We will then wrap up with a summary. We will open up for a QA. and a We will also be out uh, there after the session, so uh, I'll be happy to kind of welcome you if you have any additional questions, if you want to discuss a use case with us. Um, uh, you're absolutely welcome to, to do so. So let's start by level setting uh, the strategic context of Amazon AppFlow and how you can achieve more with writing less code. And a warm welcome uh, to Gurev, uh, who will tell us a little bit more about that flow. Hi, I'm Gaurav Gupta, Senior Product Manager with Amazon AppFlow. So Amazon AppFlow is a fully managed integration service that allows you to transfer data bidirectionally between your applications, such as Salesforce, SAP, Zendesk, and uh, AWS services such as Amazon S3 and Redshift. It allows users to perform simple data transformations and integrate these applications with other AWS services with a low code experience that we'll demo as part of this session. Now, if we look at the top integration needs of our customers, we see a few integration patterns. The first one, which is often referred to as data integration, involves bringing in structured and unstructured data from different applications into data lakes and data warehouses on AWS. Data integration often involves batch processing and is characterized by large volumes of data. Users then want to run analytics using AWS analytics services and uh, AWS machine learning services to better understand trends in that data and make informed decision in areas such as customer engagement, supply chain, healthcare, and many more. For example, an apparel manufacturer company brings in historical sales order data from their on-prem SAP systems into their data lakes on AWS to run analytics using AWS analytics services to understand sales trends. They are then able to forecast the sales for upcoming quarters using the machine learning services that AWS provides. 
Using the bidirectional data transfer capability of AppFlow, they are then able to take this data back to their SAP systems. A government healthcare agency hydrates their data lakes on AWS with patient and subscriber data to run analytics and devise the government's COVID-related healthcare management strategy. These are some great data integration examples that customers are using Airflow for today. Moving on, then the other pattern we see is around application integration. Application integration comprises of connecting two or more applications such that they function as one larger system. Application integration is typically characterized by events and transactions taking place in the respective applications. By connecting applications, users are able to break down data silos across these applications and improve operational efficiency. A private security management company is able to create an event-driven solution for their workforce scheduling and operations management by using Airflow and using the events in their Salesforce application. An e-procurement startup wants to build a solution where they have the e-procurement system talking to their ERP system, such that when a supplier invoice is submitted in their e-procurement system, it is transferred to the ERP system for final processing and payment. When the payment is made in the ERP system, the status is reflected back in their procurement system correctly. Airflow along with other AWS services, such as EventBridge and Stuff Functions, allows you to build such application integrations. Managing data is at the core of both data and application integration. Both have a goal of making data more functional and accessible to the end users. For this, users require a robust set of connectors to the applications they are using. Airflow today provides 30 plus connectors to most common of the user's applications, and many more are being announced here at reInvent, so stay tuned. Users also tell us that security of the data being transferred is a key consideration in building their integrations. With Airflow, Data is always encrypted, whether at rest or in motion. Airflow allows users to restrict transfer of their data over the public internet for applications that integrate with AWS Private Link. And Airflow adheres to leading industry compliance levels such as HIPAA, SOC 2, and ISO. Our customers tell us that as they set out to build these integrations, they face three key challenges. One, their data is stored in silos across various applications, be it SaaS, on-prem, or on cloud, making it difficult for them to unlock the value of this data, either through running analytics on a combined data set or using it to drive actions. The solutions available currently to perform integrations are complicated to implement and expensive to operate. With AppFlow, we set out to meet these, solve these challenges for our customers and meet their integration needs. Our customers tell us that they love the low code experience that AppFlow provides in building these integrations faster. They also tell us that they are able to achieve significant cost savings with Airflow. There is no upfront licensing fee, and users only pay for the flows they execute and the data they transfer. With the recent capabilities in Airflow, where it provides capabilities to integrate closely with other AWS services, users can build this integration with speed and agility and change them as business requirements change. We'll demo this as part of this session. And lastly, as we covered, Airflow build with security in mind, 
data is always encrypted, uh, we have private link support, and we met various industry compliance levels. Now, how does this work? You can use AppFlow through the console or the API. In either of these fashions, there are two key constructs that you need to keep in mind. One is the connection to the underlying application. You establish that connection by providing the credentials to that application and the respective authentication mechanisms. And the other construct to keep in mind is the flow, wherein you specify the details of your data transfer. With these two constructs, AppFlow provisions compute, storage, and networking resources and executes the data transfer for you. Looking at the user experience, you can execute your data transfers in five simple steps. First, you select your source and destinations. For source, you select the object that you want to ingest, or in case of connectors such as Salesforce, the event that you want to consume. Similarly, for destination, you choose the respective options. For example, for S3, you choose the file format that you want to save the data in and various aggregation options. Then you specify the frequency or the trigger for your flows. We support event-based for connectors such as Salesforce. You can also run your flows on demand or on a schedule of your specified frequency. When running at schedule, you can specify to transfer only incremental data, that is, data that has not been transferred till that point by specifying a timestamp field that our flow will use to determine the change data. You then map your fields from source and destination. For S3 as a destination, since it is schema-less, you can simply map all fields. However, it is, if it is other applications or Redshift, you kind of choose the fields that you want to map explicitly. While performing these mappings, you can perform simple data transformations such as masking of personal identifiable data or concatenating some fields. You can perform validations on the data such that in the case of validation rules, success or failures, you can skip the record or terminate the flow. You can filter the data so that you only transfer the data that you need from source to destination. With these simple configurations, then you can run your data transfers between our application and AWS services. While your transfer is running and once it's complete, you can view the metrics for the execution using CloudWatch metrics. Appflow integrates with CloudWatch to provide metrics such as numbers of flow failed, succeeded, running, uh, the time taken, and the number of records processed. Lastly, as the flow completes, Appflow integrates with EventBridge to publish an event on the default bus on EventBridge so that you can use it to initiate downstream processing so that you can build your event-driven architectures. With that, I'll hand it back to Carmen, who will show this in action. Cool, oh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Gubba. Uh, so yeah, so we, we now understand a little bit more about what our flow is, but I want to flesh this out, right? So, and I've prepared the demo. And because it's a live session, of course, I pre-recorded the demo. Uh, it's uh, just the two minutes. And the idea here is to show you how this works in real life. Um, I'm going to walk you through uh, the steps that we just saw uh, from Gulf. Uh, but AppFlow, you can find in our application integration menu. Uh, and like Gulf said, uh, you can either create a connection first, or you can do this directly through the flow. So in this case, I will do it directly from the flow. Now, the first thing we're going to do is give the flow a name. Now, there are other settings which I'm not going to dive deep into, uh, but we can uh, discuss those later. On the second step, we need to select the source and destination of our data. And this is where I'm going to select Salesforce, uh, because we want to get some data from Salesforce. And I will create the connection. Now, the connection is vital because it's going to allow AppFlow to communicate with your SaaS application and authenticate and authorize uh, to bring data securely. Um, 
once that's done, and you can see it's uh, very simple, uh, you don't have to do much, uh, the, the next step is to select the object that you want to ingest. Now in our case, we're gonna ingest accounts from Salesforce, and we need to select the destination. Now this could be a, another SaaS application, or uh, AWS service. In our case, we're gonna choose simple storage service or Amazon S3, where we're gonna bring the data. I'm gonna run this flow on demand, uh, so we don't have to wait uh, until it starts. And on the next step, we need to map the fields that we want from the account objects. Uh, and you can either choose to select all fields in a one-to-one -one mapping, or you can select the one that you want. Now here you have a lot of filtering, validations, transformations, capabilities, uh, which I'm not showing on the demo, uh, but I'm happy to uh, walk you through uh, if you like after the session. And that's it. Next, you just need to create and run your flow. Now, depends on how much data you have on the flow, it could take from several minutes or several seconds to several hours. Uh, in our case, I know I selected a small object, so it's gonna bring around 15 records in less than uh, five uh, seconds, I think, or six seconds. Um, and our data is now stored in Amazon S3. Um, in this demo, I'm gonna just quickly go and show you how the data looks like. Because we use the default settings for Upflow, uh, all the data will be in JSON lines format. Now, JSON lines means that each line in your file, sorry, it's maybe not very good to see here, but each line is actually a own JSON object. So that's a, a kind of a difference that you want to um, keep in mind. Now we also support other things like CSV and Parquet format. Uh, so you can choose when you're creating your flow, uh, what format would you like your data to be, uh, to be in. Right, so two minutes and we've got our data in. So you see how easy it is to use. Now, what I want you to also remember is that as easy it is to use Upflow to the AWS console, as a no-code service. As any other AWS service, it comes with a powerful sets of APIs, which means that you can use the service as a microservice, implement a common set of APIs, and immediately get exposure to all the uh, integrations that we have uh, pre-built. Another important thing I want to talk to you about is that Upflow doesn't charge per connector. Uh, the charging of Upflow is on demand and we charge per flow execution and data transfer. Very important point. Now I wanna step back for a second and talk a little bit about why is it important to talk about and discuss uh, uh, data silos. And about a decade ago, a famous, famous uh, UK mathematician, uh, name is Clive Humby, uh, coined the phrase, the data is the new oil. And the idea here was to project that data, when refined, is a very valuable asset for companies because they can bring a very valuable insights about their customers, about their business, how they make data-driven decisions, uh, and so on. And we know that data drastic, drastically uh, changes the way people do business, drive growth, and uh, kind of uh, bring insights on. But the problem is that uh, data is quite versatile. Um, uh, data is growing exponentially. Now every day uh, we get about 2.5 quintillion <coughs> bytes of data. That's a lot. It's kind of billion of steroids, if you like, with 18 zeros. And we know data is uh, growing exponentially. According to Forbes, over the last two years alone, 80% of the data was created. Uh, so the question here is, how do we manage to get all this data and be, being able to work with this data so we can get valuable insights and give our users and applications access to this data in order to uh, apply analytics or machine learning use cases? And so, one of the ways our customers are doing it, and they're super exciting about, excited about it, is implementing uh, data lakes. So that's the idea of getting data from different data silos, from different data applications, and store them in a centralized uh, place, such as Amazon S3, uh, for example. And that gives them exposure to this data in a secure and compliant way, uh, so they can uh, do uh, uh, other things like querying the data, extracting smaller data sets and working with them and so on. 
And so with Amazon Upflow, uh, we've seen an example of how we can break down, down a one data silo, for example, with Salesforce. But as Gurov said, uh, we support over 30 connectors as of today. And as of Wednesday, we will have a lot more. So stay tuned and uh, watch uh, the keynote uh, from Swami, uh, who will announce uh, a lot of connectors for us. Um, but as you can see, a lot of those applications is what we call SaaS applications. Now, at the beginning of this year, we announced something called Custom Connector SDK, which is a software development kit available for Java and Python, which gives you the ability to create a custom connector that will be registered in AppFlow and used the same way as any other connector. And the idea here is that you can have AppFlow as a centralized integration hub where you can not only communicate with all the SaaS applications and all the connectors that we're going to uh, give, uh, give you off the shelf, but you can build your own connectors for your proprietary applications or private APIs and so on. And the best of, uh, best of it is that um, um, because it's a low-code, no-code service, you lower the technical boundary, the technical bar for your business users to be able to interact with the service and bring data in uh, for machine learning and analytics use cases. Now what that gives you is, uh, by now you should know that uh, AWS pretty much is into innovation. Uh, but we believe that the people who are as close as possible to our customers are in the best position to innovate. And we call this innovation at the edge. Essentially give a non-technical people the ability to interact and read data or write data from specific data sources can speed up uh, this innovation. And so this is what customers are doing today. Right? So they are breaking down data silos. Uh, they're bringing data into S3. And Amazon, is, uh, Amazon Upflow is great with this because it helps them uh, do this at scale uh, and without writing any, any complicated code. But this is just the beginning of the story. Right? So customers, of course, they want to do analytics, they want to do uh, machine learning, and so on. And so we often see that customers are combining different AWS services into a solutions uh, that, had, that can help them do uh, more. And one of those use cases is um, using our analytics portfolio uh, and AWS Glue crawlers and Glue data catalogs, which essentially catalogs your data and allows you to uh, use, um, to query your data with standard SQL language with uh, services such as Amazon Athena or uh, providing dashboards and BI uh, with services such as Amazon QuickSight. But what we found is that there is an invis almost invisible manual boundary where customers who bring data in with Upflow uh, have to do all the things in order to kickstart the downstream processing, if you like. And so we found that customers have to manually create crawlers, manually run these crawlers, and so on. Some of our customers were trying to automate this process with different uh, means and techniques. Uh, but we decided to do something about it. And in a very typical Amazonian way, we sat down and we started working backwards uh, to see how we can uh, fix this for our customers, make it easier. And so we ask ourselves the following question. How do we make an integration for Amazon Upflow that will allow Amazon Upflow to integrate with other AWS services in a loosely coupled fashion? And so what we did is we uh, made a uh, native integration with Amazon EventBridge, which allows our customers to create event-driven architectures. Uh, Upflow will emit events in EventBridge into the default bus. And for those of you who don't know, Amazon EventBridge is the new name of uh, CloudWatch events. So it's pretty much uh, similar APIs underneath. But essentially, the cust customers are able to create uh, rules, intercept those events, and automate uh, downstream processing. But what we missed here, and I'm self-critical, is that we added a lot of complexity. Because event-driven architectures are great. I have a few talks about event-driven architectures myself. I'm a big fan. 
but, are, but, but they can be very complicated, especially in a data-driven uh, scenario where you have a set of steps that you need to perform in order to not only ingest your data, but also prepare it for downstream uh, kind of service or application uh, and so on. And that kind of contradicted with the mission of Upflow to make things easier for our customers and be more local, no-code solution. Um, so I'm super happy uh, to welcome today Ray Junk, our principal product manager for Upflow, who will tell you about how we implemented one of our Amazon leadership principles, and that's Invent and Simplify, uh, to uh, kind of simplify data integrations for AWS analytics and machine learning services. Thank you, Carmen. Hi, I'm Ray, Principal Product Manager here at Amazon AppFlow. I'm excited to be here today to announce several new features, um, new integrations, new data processing capabilities or data preparation capabilities, and a host of new SaaS connectors that we'll uh, discuss here and uh, announce later this week. All of this to help simplify your data integration workflows for analytics and machine learning within your organization. So let's start with our new integration with the AWS Glue Data Catalog. Uh, continuing on from Common's demonstration, the process of cataloging and sharing your data across analytics and machine learning requires you to run several jobs, um, and it can be somewhat complex and, and a bit tedious. So customers have asked us, can you help us simplify this process? Can you help us take data from a myriad of data silos and in several clicks, let us run analytics and machine learning? Uh, and that's what we did. So I'm gonna demonstrate that, um, and we're gonna talk about a few of the features before, before we get into the demo, but um, yeah. So basically, that's, that's one of the key features we'll be describing today. So with the AWS Glue Crawler, what you typically need to do, is, once you move your data from Salesforce SAP into a data lake, is you need to classify your data. Um, then you need to verify the classifier. Then you need to connect to the data store, uh, create an inferred schema, then you need to verify that schema. Well, write the metadata, then verify the schema, and then also verify the data types. So it's a bit of, a bit of, a work, a bit of work and a bit of debugging and modifying jobs. Um, and then you need, need to maintain your jobs for every data transfer. And for every time you make a change or an edit, you need to rerun and go through this process again. So don't get me wrong, the AWS Glue, Glue Crawler is a great service. If you need to extract metadata and infer schema from a large uh, collection of data sets, but with Amazon Afflow, we already know firsthand what the object source schema is, so we can save you all of these steps. So with Amazon Afflow, happy to announce, you can take all of your data across all of your data silos, and within three clicks, you can classify, infer schema, write the metadata, register your partitions, uh, and basically create your data catalog in just three clicks. We'll demonstrate that. Okay, so we talked about how Afflow automates the cataloging of your data and removes the requirement to use a crawler, okay? So we just kind of remove that requirement, integrated it right into Afflow. Uh, we also, with Amazon Afflow, trigger your data catalog table creation and update after every flow run. So you don't need to manage these jobs and, and, and manage the coordination and synchronization of these jobs. It will run from AppFlow directly. You can also uh, basically replace EventBridge because it's all automated with an AppFlow. So with this level of integration, um, it allows you to quite seamlessly take your data from all the different connectors that we support, bring it into a data lake or a data warehouse, and share that with AWS Analytics, Machine Learning, and BI. So within, a, within several clicks, you can share, govern, analyze, and visualize your data from within Analytics, uh, ML, and BI. Examples are Amazon Athena, AWS Glue, 
Amazon Redshift Spectrum, Amazon EMR. Okay, also within several clicks, you can take your data and analyze it and prepare it in, uh, with our machine learning service, Amazon SageMaker, and also use with Data Wrangler in terms of doing additional data prep um, all within a few clicks. You can also take your data and visualize it within QuickSight, also within a few clicks. So that's something we can um, touch on later in the presentation. Okay, so we talked about transformations and cataloging. Uh, as Colin touched on, on a few things, like you could do field mapping, you could do validations, you could do filters. We talked about cataloging data. We're also adding new capabilities in your data pipeline, so we can partition your data, and we can also aggregate your data. So these are new features that were just released last week. Let's talk a little bit about what partitioning and aggregation is, just to get us on the same page before we get into the demo. So partitioning divides your table based on column values, such as country, state, and city. Partitions act as virtual columns. You define them at table creation. And what it does is basically reduces the amount of data scanned per query, thereby improving performance. Amazon Aflow supports hive partitioning. So I just gave an example here. Billing country equals France, billing country equals Canada, et cetera. Billing state equals um, North Carolina, California, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> we support up to 10 levels deep in terms of partition keys. And we also, actually we'll come back to what Aflow does in the next slide. Just looking at partitioning in general, uh, looking at the performance and cost benefits. So I have an example here. If you took a non-partition query, and let's say you scan 74 gig of data, the runtime was 4.8 seconds, the cost using a query engine like Athena is 36 cents. If you took that same data set and you partitioned it, you could reduce your scan data down to 30 megabytes, you could reduce your runtime down to 0.7 seconds, and here's the kicker, you can reduce your cost uh, by 99.99% down to 1 one hundredth of a cent for this particular scan or this query. So again, partitioning versus non-partitioning, 85% faster performance, 99% lower cost, okay? So let's talk about aggregation and its performance benefits. So queries run more efficiently when data scanning and queries can be done in parallel. Uh, small files impact performance due to overhead, so you could spend too much time pulling data, extracting metadata, creating directories, et cetera. Um, so you don't want them too small. About 128 megabytes is the optimal size. Larger files reduce parallelism, so you don't want them three terabytes long. You want to break those up into uh, reasonable sizes, like 512 megabytes or 128 megabytes, depending on your application and depending on your use case. So if you optimize your file sizes correctly, you can get up to 90% performance improvement when records are aggregated into the optimal file size. Okay. So here's an example, a uh, non-aggregated query, 100,000 files, the runtime is 13 seconds. You take the same data set, you aggregate all the records into one file in this example, and you get the query to, or runtime down to 1.3 seconds. Okay, so tremendous benefits and cost savings downstream on other query engines that you run um, with this kind of capability. So I'm happy to announce that Amazon Aflo now supports partitioning uh, based on column values. Um, we can support up to 10 partition keys, and it's all done through the console or through the API. It's a simple, and we'll walk through the demonstration. You simply, uh, we know the source object schema, we make it available to you, you just choose it in a dropdown, and you can select your partition keys that way, up to 10 levels deep um, in this current release. We also automate the registration of partitions in the AWS Glue Data Catalog on behalf, for, on your behalf. We also support aggregation. So now we can aggregate records into files to the size that you specify. And this is done on a per flow basis and it can be editable. Okay, so you can define your, um, depending on the use case, define your file size for aggregation. Or you can also 
put all of your records into one file per partition. Okay. For those familiar, familiar with AppFlow, we also made some improvements uh, in how we do partitioning and aggregation. So if you used Apple before, you, you notice that partitions are always put into execution IDs. Um, that helps when you want to create dedicated flows and you want to kind of keep your, your flows separated by the execution ID, but you don't always want to do that. So, so we gave you the ability to, to not use an execution ID and to partition based on timestamp or execution ID or on destination fields. Uh, aggregation also, we made some improvements. So you can choose from these two options, you can also choose to not aggregate at all. Okay, so the third area customers asked us about is, can you help us with our connectivity challenges to SaaS applications? So just a couple of examples, but more and more are quite common, is how do I improve my customer's digital experience? Um, so how do I pull data from Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, Salesforce, and how do I improve that journey that, that my customers go through? How do I create targeted marketing campaigns? How do I populate my data lake easily with SAP Zendesk data and then run analytics on it um, and not have to worry about all the complexities as, as common uh, described in terms of APIs and integration? Another one, analyze revenue impact. So how do I pull marketing data from Marketo, from Salesforce Marketing Cloud, and then again run analytics and machine learning on it? So we listened, and what we've provided is some of you who are familiar with AppFlow, we've got quite a large library of connectors now, and as mentioned by Common and, and Gaurav, we're really excited because on Wednesday, in two days, we'll be announcing a, a quite a large number of new connectors at Swami's keynote Wednesday morning. But we have CRM uh, connectors today. We have analytics connectors. So examples include Google Analytics, Salesforce, Zendesk. We have business and operations connectors, SAP, ServiceNow, Slack, Datadog, and many more. Uh, marketing connectors, Facebook ads, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, um, Marketo, things that we've um, talked about earlier. And again, many more connectors to be announced this week. Let's check in on Wednesday for that. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a quick demo and show how easy it is to pull data in from multiple data, or multiple data silos and different sources into an S3 data lake and then run analytics directly from it just in a few clicks without writing any code. Um, so you can see in this block diagram, just with the help here um, of this block diagram, Salesforce will be pulled in using AppFlow and the data pipeline that we'll be running here is transformations, uh, cataloging, partitioning, and aggregation, uh, all done with AppFlow, uh, populated it into S3 and the data catalog. And then what we'll show is from Amazon Athena or other tools, you can just basically access the data immediately through your data catalog and then run analytics and machine learning all within a several clicks. Okay, so here's a demo. You can go to Amazon um, AppFlow today, it's, uh, this capability is, um, went live just a few days ago, so this is um, available to you today. I'm just gonna start this demo here. Actually, to save some time, I'm gonna skip to past what Common demonstrated and move right to where the delta is. So at about a minute 20, Sorry about that, just give me a sec here. Okay, so this is kind of taking from what, where Common was and we'll, we'll, we'll branch from there. So here I'm choosing the Salesforce in this example. I'm choosing the account object as well. And then for destination, I'm choosing S3. When you choose S3 as a destination, you have a couple of options that come up. Um, we'll just get to that in a second here. So I'm just choosing a, an S3 bucket that I've set up here. So you can notice the expansion uh, selection here, glue data catalog settings. So this is where you basically expand that box and you'll be given a, several, a few options to, to catalog your data.
All right, so one checkbox if you want to catalog your data. That's the first click. The second click, choose your user role that has the right glue permissions or the glue data catalog permissions. So I'm choosing that here. And then select your database. Give your table a name and then that's all you need to do to set up your um, glue data catalog integration for each flow every time the flow runs. Okay, so I'm giving it a table name, and that's all you need to do in this definition. Uh, file format settings, next. Is the, uh, so same options, JSON, CSV, Parquet format. You can also add a timestamp to your file name um, here in the bottom as well. You can choose to run your flow on demand or on schedule. The mapping fields, the common demonstrated here, I'm gonna map all fields from Salesforce to, to S3. Okay, so you can see a new expansion box uh, selection here, partition and aggregation settings. So here, I'm able to define my partition settings. You can see there's three options, date and time, execution ID and destination fields. With date and time, those are the same as what the current product does. You can partition by year, hour, or sorry, year, month, day, hour, or minute. Execution ID is what we offer today. You can also deselect that, which I will here. And I'm just gonna basically partition by destination fields. So every time I run the flow, it'll actually store every flow run in the same partition hierarchy that you define here, okay? So you can run your query engines on multiple flow runs within the same partition hierarchy now. So here, um, I'm choosing my first partition key as country, my second partition key as state, and my third partition key as city. And that's all I need to do to partition all of my data and store it in my partition hierarchy and then the next set of settings here is my aggregation options. So here the default is don't aggregate, so get a, quite a number of small files. Um, the other option, as we talked about, you can aggregate all records into one file, which has value. And the third option is I can aggregate records into multiple files in each part, aggregate all records into multiple files in each partition, right? And this is where I can specify um, the optimal file size, which I'll get to here. Oh, one thing I want to mention is on the S3 URL, you'll see the um, location of the uh, output files. And I just want to mention that uh, you'll see a, a folder in there called schema version. So the schema version is something Outflow inserts. So if you um, choose a particular, particular schema, a particular field mapping, a particular um, uh, uh, particular data types for your destination, that defines your schema. As soon as you change any one of those, like a change a data type, or you change the field mapping, or you change the partition hierarchy, it just changes the, the, the schema of the output file. So all we do is up version or up basically create a new folder called schema version two because you changed the schema. And the reason AppFlow does that is just to avoid any kind of the errors you'll get in a downstream query engine because you don't want to mix data, uh, sorry, files with different uh, organizational structure or schema. You'll create a lot of chaos. So what we've done is just basically create a different schema version folders for you to avoid those situations. So all you'll see when, when we go through this demo here, I'm creating the flow I'm just reviewing the flow details, just to, making sure everything is correct, which it is. Um, then I'm gonna create flow, and then I'm gonna run the flow. And then we'll look at the data, we'll look at the catalog, and we'll look at how easy it is to, to pull this data from an, a different analytics service. Okay, so here I am, I'm just creating the flow, running the flow. Let's just give it a few seconds here. Okay, so you're under run history, just like with Amazon Outflow, you can look at the flow run status. 
check the run history to look at your table creation status and your partition status, or partition table status as well. Okay, so here's where I show its success. Uh, so everything's complete. My data is cataloged, my tables are updated, my partitions are all registered, my files transferred, my data is available. So what I'll do is I'll just go to check out the bucket here and the S3 bucket next. Okay, so you can see uh, in that S3 bucket, I've got schema version one, so the first time I ran this. Then I've got the petition hierarchy here. You can see it's broken out by billing country. I clicked into California, or USA, I in, clicked into California, Mountain View, and there's my output file. Uh, in this case, it's a JSON file. And I'll just use S3 query to, to view the data. There you go, you can see, um, I'll run the query, and you can see all relevant records for Mountain View uh, are, in this, are in this file. I didn't have quite enough data to fill up, I think I chose 128 megabytes, but these would be a series of 128 megabyte files in that folder. Okay, let's take a look at the Glue Data Catalog. So go to the database I created here, select the table, and you can see a thing of beauty. <laughs> Basically, you'll see the entire schema has been extracted and populated in the Glue Data Catalog. Now this one here, you don't need to verify because we have the source object schema. We do our full validation. It's a fully managed connector. So it's pretty much correct. Um, I'm just showing you the schema here. Uh, we also register the partition keys for you, of course. And then if you look under partitions, we also register all the partitions for you uh, in the next tab. Right here. Yeah, there we go. So within each of these partitions, you can view files, which I'll do here. And for that particular partition, I'm pulling up the data, and I'm just gonna run a query on that data. There we go. Okay, so now we've basically populated your catalog, created your partition hierarchy, moved all the data in, aggregated it all, literally, with, after some simple configuration, you hit run flow and it all gets done in one process, in, in, in one app flow job. Okay, here now I'm just showing, if you pull up an AWS analytics or machine learning tool, I'm just pulling up Athena for the first time here, and you can see that it's populated in the Glue Data Catalog database and table. All I do is select the table, and you can see the entire schema all the partitions, all the data is accessible through Athena. The same is true with QuickSight, the same is true with EMR, the same is true with Glue, the same is true with SageMaker, okay? So once you populate the data in that catalog with AppFlow, you instantly have it available in your analytics and machine learning services with AWS. So that was the final one. And on that note, um, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna hand it back to Carmen here. That was awesome, yeah? Thanks, uh, thanks, Ray. Uh, and just to remind you, right, so it was a manual step. So it took a lot of time for you to build and, and transform your data before, and now you can do it with just a few clicks. So. Awesome. I just want to summarize here uh, with a few uh, key points, right? So Upflow sees access to data and integration with AWS analytics and machine learning services as a key, as a table stakes uh, towards a delivering better customer and business insights. Amazon Upflow is a fully managed, secure and compliant service uh, that helps you break down data silos and uh, bring data in or write data into SaaS application with few clicks without writing any code and um, kind of uh, 
uh, I've already uh, mentioned that now with the new features uh, uh, from the uh, team, uh, you can catalog your data in AWS data, uh, data catalog, in blue data catalog, uh, partition your data, aggregate your data to better suit your downstream analytics and machine learning processes, why not applications, application integration, and so on. Uh, you can try Upflow uh, today. Uh, it's available on AWS console. We will be out there uh, if you have any questions. Thank you so much for sticking until the end. Uh, and I welcome you to uh, kind of fill up our survey. You will get a link after this session. And hope to see you next time on reInvent. Thank you so much.